Photographing the moon is a lot of fun, whether you're out camping or you're at home in your backyard. You just need a few pieces of equipment up front. First of all, you need a camera with some sort of telephoto lens attached to it. Now, in this case, I have a 200 to 500 millimeter, but it doesn't have to be some fancy new Nikkor. You could use an older vintage telephoto lens. For example, this is a vintage 200 millimeter prime lens that would get the job done. In addition to a camera and telephoto lens, I recommend that you have some sort of tripod. Now with some of these newer lenses, the vibration reduction technology is so good, you can get a crisp image of the moon shooting handheld. However, your best practice is to use some sort of tripod or stabilization. And then if you really wanna move on to the advanced levels of moon photography, you might consider having a remote shutter release, which can be wireless, or of the wired variety. <laughs> and this little eyepiece cover. For shooting Nikon, this is the cheapest part, I believe, that Nikon sells. We'll talk about what it does in just a minute. Step one, put your camera on your tripod, zero in on the moon, and let's talk about camera settings for a moment. You wanna fly with the camera in manual mode, M mode. And there are three settings in particular we wanna pay attention to. First of all is your ISO. We wanna set the ISO to the lowest possible setting, which for most Nikon cameras is going to be 100. We wanna set the aperture of the lens to its sharpest aperture. And it varies from lens to lens, but a good rule of thumb will be somewhere between f8 and f11. Finally, we wanna consider shutter speed. Again, a rule of thumb, you might start with one one hundredth shutter speed. You're going to end up taking a few photos and modifying the shutter speed just a bit, depending on what you really need. It's best to photograph the moon on a clear night. If there's any kind of mist or haze in the air, that will affect the ultimate quality of your photos. To get the sharpest picture possible, you don't want any kind of camera shape because that will cause blur in your photo. And if you're shooting with a DSLR, you should consider putting your camera into mirror up mode. With mirror up mode, you'll actually need to press the shutter button twice to take a photograph. The first press of the shutter button will lift the mirror up out of the way so you can take the picture. What this really accomplishes is it reduces the amount of vibration in camera that could potentially cause camera shake and lead to a blurry photo. Camera shake can be produced by you simply handling the camera. So that's why I recommend you using either a remote shutter release, uh, in which case you're not touching the camera to take the photo, or if you don't have a remote shutter release, you can set your camera into self timer mode and just take the photo with for example, a two second delay on the self timer. And that way you won't be touching the camera to introduce any kind of camera shake when the photo is taken. Now, the first couple of photos that you take may not be perfect. So you might want to do this a few times until you've got all of your settings properly dialed in, until you've got your aperture and especially your shutter speed set to get the best possible results. Now, with regard to the little Nikon eyepiece cover I was telling you about, stray ambient light can actually enter the eyepiece and it can affect the image being recorded. Now, for an average moonshot, this may not be a problem, but if you're doing any kind of long exposure astrophotography, you're going to want to use one of these eyepiece covers. It's just a good practice. So now the eyepiece is unusable and that is why the Lord created live view. So you can put your camera in live view mode, just compose the photograph looking at the rear LCD screen of the camera in live view. Pretty much everyone post processes moon photos just a bit because no matter how sharp your lens may be, when you add a little bit of contrast and maybe adjust the white balance a bit, you're gonna end up with a more pleasing image. So when you pull it up into Photoshop, you can play around with the contrast and the sharpness and uh, that sort of thing just to get the image that you really want. So that's just a quick look at moon photography. The next time you hear about a lunar eclipse or a super moon, you will be ready to go. Watch this video, get out there, and take some great shots.
And if you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel because we're going to be doing many more such tutorials in the future. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Loloho.photo is all about photography. The gear we use, the techniques we employ, and sometimes the places we go. Our emphasis is travel photography, but we cover a little bit of everything here on this channel. It's about getting out there, having fun, and capturing memories. So if you're into photography and travel, be sure to subscribe to our channel and you'll never miss a video. <laughs>